How do you do it? How do you do it? What? Like, how do you, how do you continue <laughs> on the live? Good morning, those who are tuning in on the live. People ask, how do you do it? How do you keep on going? Um, doing it day after day after day. I'll tell you this, guys. Taking it day by day. Day by day. Uh, strengthening your walk day by day. Being in the word day by day. Uh, asking the Lord, give me eyes to see, ears to hear day by day. And it's a it's a day-to-day -day walk, guys. Every day. Good morning, Joe Lewis. Good morning, Helen. Good morning, Yolanda. Good to have you guys on. And it's a uh, it's day to day. It's a day to day walk, in your walk with the Lord and getting into the uh, into the scriptures day to day, and then asking the Lord speak to me. Lord, will you speak to me? Will you have your way? And, and He does, and He He continues to do. It's like look at, uh, we've been on day twenty five of the uh, one year Bible journey, but actually we've been on longer. Good morning, Salma. Good to have you on the live. Good to have you. Good to have you. Danny Castro, good to have you. Um, we've been uh, journeying along with this one with the one year Bible since uh, 2020. Uh, actually, a little bit longer. Good morning, Tyson Sr. Good to have you. Uh, we've been journeying along. Uh, good morning, Jade. Good to have you. Look at you on the live. Come on. <laughs> uh, and uh, it's it's a day to day walk, guys. And I want to be on this. Uh, we're on this journey together. And what better way to be on on a journey than journeying through the Word of God? Because a lot of times you may feel like when you read the Word of God, you feel like you're like I'm not getting anything out of it. And uh, and I'm here to tell you that God God still speaks to us, and God still He still uh, does amazing things in our lives. And Good morning, Stephanie, Luna, good to have you guys on. Uh, Javier, we're praying for you. Little Javier, we're praying for you. Hope you guys are doing better with the with the cough and everything. Uh, but uh, it's a, it's a day-to-day -day, uh, journey. And so what better way to have a community uh, coming together. Good morning, Irma Estevez, good to have you guys on. Good to have you. Um, and so what better way to be on this journey together and journey through the through the Bible, journey through the word of life. The Bible says that his word is life, spirit and life. And so uh, I'm excited to see what God's going to show us today. But uh, the people, people ask, how do you how do you continue? How do you do it? Like, uh, aren't you busy? Like, yeah, I'm busy. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a I'm a husband. I'm a father. I have a, I have a job, a full time job. Um, and so and then I help out with the ministry and um, just sharing the word. But to me, the most important aspect is my relationship with God. Because when you have the relationship with God vertical, you're like, let my eyes be fixed on you. Then he helps, he, 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 he guides you and helps you on the horizontal with everything else that we need to accomplish, with everything else that we need to do. Am I saying that, do I have it all together? Absolutely not. But the vertical lord help me with the vertical god help me with the uh, in my relationship with you strong and strong and strong and strong and strong and so check this out guys this is powerful we are in january 25th so fast this month has woo, has gone by so fast so uh genesis chapter 50 and then we go into exodus so we finish the book of good morning christine good to have you uh, we finished the book of Genesis, and now we start the book of Exodus, and then we're going to go into Matthew chapter 16, uh, 13 and 17 to 9, and then Psalms 21, 1 through 13, and then finish it off with Proverbs 1 through 6. And so uh, as we finish off Genesis, we read the, the story of how, uh, <clears throat> how uh uh, Jacob, he, uh, he he passed away, now Joseph. And so uh, as we read that, I want to briefly go over that real quick, but I want to go into, into Exodus. But uh, Joseph's brothers, <laughs> uh, they were afraid because they said, okay, now that our father have died, uh, now Joseph's going to try to revenge, get revenge on us. Good morning, Kathy, good to have you. And uh, it says that, uh, that Joseph's brothers... 
They thought now, since Jacob had died, that Joseph was now, now going to get revenge. And so they were, they were terrified. Uh, right here in verse 14 out of Genesis chapter 50, after, after Genesis 50, chapter uh, verse 14, after bearing Jacob, Joseph returned to Egypt with his brothers and all who accompanied him to his father's burial. But now that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers became fearful. Now Joseph will show his anger and pay us back for all the wrong we did to him in the past. They're living in the past. And so just briefly go over that. And so they sent this message to Joseph. Before your father died, he instructed us to say to you, <laughs> you better listen to dad. Uh, they said, they instruct, he, he told us uh, to say to you, please forgive your brothers for the wrong, for the great wrong that they did, for their sins is, for their sin in treating you so cruelly. So we, the servants of God, of your father, beg you to forgive our sin. When Joseph received this message, he broke down and wept. Then his brothers came and threw themselves down before Joseph. Look, we are your slaves, he said. But Joseph replied, don't be afraid of me. Am I God? That can I punish you? You intended harm for me, but God intended all good. It intended it for all good. He brought me to this position so I can save the lives of many people. Don't be afraid. I will continue to take care of you and your children. So he reassured them by speaking kindly to them. Wow. <laughs> what, what was meant for harm was for their own good. What was meant for harm for Joseph. When Joseph received the message, he said, don't be afraid. You intended harm for me, but God intended the good. He brought me to this position so I can save your life. I can save the people around that is a powerful message. And so just want to quickly go over that. And uh, I want to get into, into Exodus because Exodus is so powerful. The Lord, the Lord was speaking to me about, about in Genesis, but I want to really highlight what, what was spoken in, uh, in Genesis. <clears throat> so we, now we, we go from, from uh, Joseph being the, being the second in command. So now we're going into, into Exodus where there's a Pharaoh after that, they didn't know what, what was going on. They didn't have, um, how do I put this? They didn't have the, um, the, they had the history, but they had forgotten about Joseph pretty much. And so let's look into, into uh, Exodus chapter two. It says, about this time, a man and a woman from the tribe of Levi got married. The woman became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She saw that she, he was a special baby and kept him hidden for three months. But when she could no longer hide him, she got a basket made of paprika uh, weeds and waterproofed it with tar and pitch. And she put the baby in the basket and laid it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile River. The baby's sister then the baby sister then stood at a distance watching to see what would happen to him. So uh, soon Pharaoh's daughter came down to bathe in the river and her attendants walked along the riverbed. And when the princess saw the basket among the reeds, she sent her maid to get it for her. When the princess opened it, she saw the baby. The little boy was crying, felt sorry for him. This must be one of the Hebrew children, she said. Then the baby's Sister approached the princess. Should I go find one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? She asked. Yes, do. The princess replied. So the girl went and called the baby's mother. Take this baby and nurse him for me. The princess told the baby's mother. And I will pay you for your help. Come on. Look what the Lord has done. Later, when the boy was older, his mother brought him back to Pharaoh's daughter, who adopted him as her own. The princess named him Moses, for she explained, I lifted him out of the water, or I drew him out of the water. And then we finish the story right there. And you're like, okay, what is the Lord speaking right here? And so check, check this out, guys. In the first verse, it says, About this time, a woman, a man and a woman from the tribe of Levi got married. So it's talking about Moses' parents. And as you, as we 
before, as we would read this, we would just kind of skim over and we're like, okay, now we're getting into the story of Moses. But the Lord started prompting in my heart. He said, who are Moses' parents? Who's Moses' parents? Because usually, as they, um, as they would name the, the children, it says, uh, let's just put this, Jacob was the son of Isaac. Isaac was the son of Adam, I mean, Abraham. Abraham was the son of so-and-so, so-and-so. And we see the lineage. But in this portion of scripture, we see it was a time a man and a woman from the tribe, about the side of the, a man and woman from the tribe of Levi got married. Then the woman became pregnant, gave birth to his son. She saw they're very special. And so we, we go into now the story of Moses. And so we're, we're looking at this, and I was, I was looking at this. I was like, who are Moses' parents? Because why does it feel like they're it's skimming over them? Why does it feel like there's no significance about Moses' parents? And so the Lord is telling me there's so much significance about Moses' parents. Because Moses represented the, the deliverer. And so let's look at who were Moses' parents because it just seems like the, the Bible was, was kind of vague and kind of just skimming over. And then so we're going to read into that right now. But I want to get into who were Moses' parents because later on in the portions of Scripture, it's like then it, it tells you, but it's later on. Like later on, like, like kind of like an afterthought um, of who Moses' parents were. And so Moses' parents, I mean, we, we continue to read on, as Aram and Ar, uh, Amram. Amram was his father, and it was uh, Jochebed was his mother. So Amram, his father, and Jochebed, his mother. And so as we read this, the Lord started giving me insight. He's like, look at the names of Moses' parents. What does it mean? What, what, what's their significance? Because we know as we read the Bible, we've been, we've been studying that. We've been journeying along like, long enough. It's like, read the names. Like, look at the meaning of the names. And so if you look at the meaning of Amram, the name Amram, it means the people are exalted or the friend of the Most High. And then if you look at Jochebed, it means Yahweh is glory. And in this portion of scripture, uh, we see that, that Pharaoh put a, an order to kill the, the babies, to kill, he had the midwives try to take out, to take out the kids. And so this is significant because look what's happening now is in, in this day and age to take out the, the, the newborns, take out the babies. And then so as we read this, the significance of Amram and Jochebed is so significant because their seed, Moses, was to be a deliverer of the people. The seed that, that, they, that they had was a deliverer to what was to come. And so Amram means that the people are exalted. And then Jochebed meaning Yahweh is glory. So we're, just gonna, we're gonna put this all together. And so out of their seed comes Moses. Out of their seed comes a deliverer. Because in this portion of scriptures, the Hebrews became the slaves of the Egyptians. And so God is saying, I'm going to exalt a people. Come on, let's get it all together. I'm going to exalt the people who were once in slavery, who were once in bondage, who were once in, in, a, in a portion of scripture where it's like they were beaten down they were oppressed by pharaoh they were oppressed by the people and so having going from bondage to the people now being exalted and becoming a great nation and just hear that in the spirit god is saying what was done what was done to you in the past what was done to you maybe you were in bondage of sin we all were in bondage of sin maybe you were in bondage of addiction good morning grandma lola good to have you maybe you were in bondage to an addiction maybe you were in bondage to to lustful thoughts maybe you were in bondage into into uh, so many different aspects of of sin because if we committed one sin we committed them all and so you're, God is saying, I'm taking a people who were once enslaved and now they'll become exalted people. Out of their seed comes Moses. Out of their seed, God says, I raised up a deliverer. I'm raising up. 
and so significant of this. And so the, the, the Bible says, I'm raising up a deliverer in this. I'm raising up a people that were once in bondage. Now I'm going to exalt these people. Now I'm going to make them a great nation, not on their own doing, but by the glory of God. And we now we're going into Jochebed, meaning Yahweh is glory. Whoo, come on, somebody. Yahweh is glory. Jochebed, that's what her name means. And so God is saying, I'm going to exalt the people for the glory of God. I'm going to part the Red Sea for the glory of God. I'm going to make a way for the glory of God. What was done to in the past is, is in the past. God says, I'm parting the Red Sea. I'm doing a new thing, says the Lord. And God says, for the glory of God. And out of this seed is birth Moses. And so significant. And look at this, guys. I don't know how long we're going to be on this, but this is, this is so powerful. Uh, I wanted to share this with you guys. And so... As I was studying this, I just started. I just started just going online and seeing the mystery case of Moses' parents. That's that's the name of it. Do you know the names of Moses' parents? Now we do. <laughs> Probably not. I'd venture. And there's a reason for that. They're, they are somewhat shrouded in mystery and revealed only later on with a scandalous punch. But the message of Moses' family's background is one that brings great hope to all of us, as Moses can can tell you sin in our past and in our families in our family's past before us need not to hold us back any longer in slavery god is a god of new beginnings so back to moses' parents and the skeletons in the holy man's family closet in english the first five books of the bible are named according to the subject matter genesis the, the beginnings exodus the exit from egypt and so on but in Hebrew, then they are named according to the first words of the book. In Hebrew, the second book is called Shemot, which means names or numbered. Uh, the second book, sorry, uh, means Shemot means names, because the opening line is these are the names of the sons of, is of uh, Israel. So when the book announces itself in this way, these are the names and is titled names. It's a good idea to pay attention to the names. The book begins by listening to the sons of Israel by name, Jacob's 12 sons, and telling us that in total, 72 souls came from the loins of Jacob. And we then notice two other names are highlighted in the first chapter, and they are women. It's not often that the Bible mentions women, so when they are named, it's a hint to take note. These women are were the midwives. Sipra and, and Pua. S uh, Sipra and Pua. They took a great personal risk to save many Hebrew babies from death. After Pharaoh had commanded all the boys to be killed, they have been remembered for their righteousness and courage and refusal to join in Pharaoh's genocide. Women worthy of, com uh, uh, of praise and being remembered by, by name. And by moving on to our hero in chapter 2, we note with some confusion that Moses' parents are distinctly not named. A bit odd in the, in the book of names. The second chapter opens up by saying that uh, some guy from the house of Levi marries a woman also from the house of Levi. So Moses was the, from the tribe of Levi. And they also had a son. With, uh, so we know that they also had two other children, Moses and Aaron and Miriam. Surely one of them would have remembered their parents' name. Why is this detail omitted since we are so busy with every, everyone's name? Just like what we're, what we're talking about. We're so busy with other people's names and other people's business. It, means, it seems that the writer uh, avoid name, naming Moses' parents several times through, the chap, through chapter 2. And then the truth comes out. Later on in the sixth, chap in the sixth chapter, we find a surprise. In verse 14, the, the naming of names begins again, and the heads of each household of Israel are listed in details given about their offsprings. It's only here we see finally discover the names of Moses' mom and dad, Jochebed and Amram. The house of Levite is described, and it is, it is in the house of Levite that Aram... His father shows up in verse 16. We learn about his wife too. We learn about Amram and Jochebed. 
the, the parents of Moses. Aram took Jochebed, his father's sisters, to wife, and she bore him Aaron and Moses. Later, the, ma the matter emphasizes in verse 26 and 27, in the case we missed, in case we missed it. These are the these are that Aaron and Moses, to whom the Lord said, Bring out of the children of Israel from the land of Egypt according to their hosts. These are they that spoke to the Pharaoh Egypt, king of Egypt, to bring out the children of Israel from Egypt. These are Moses and Aaron. What's going on here? We are why are their identities hidden at the beginning and then emphasizes like this here and now? I think the clue is in verse 16. And the usual, unusual nature of the marriage, Amram took his father's sister to be his wife. So Moses' father married his own aunt, basically. This is forbidden in God's law, the Torah, that Moses would receive from God only a short while later. In Leviticus chapter 18, verse 12 and 16, makes it clear that marrying your aunt is off limits. Clearly, Jochebed and Aram married before the prohibition was given, but it is a bit shocker that for all those Israelites who knew the law, looking back into hindsight, Moses, the great lawgiver, was born within what would soon be an unlawful union. Wow. Our background is not our destiny. Perhaps the reason that his parents were not named when they first appeared is because unlike Sipra and Pua, their deeds conflicted with the law of God as opposed to being examples to follow as the midwives have been, but still they are named in the end and what amazes and what's amazing family they have. They take <clears throat> the the takeaway message of this mystery of Moses' parents could be this no matter what your background, no matter what has happened in your family, or even how it might have felt might have left a mark on you to today to today. Nothing can stop God's wonderful plans for you. The sins of your fathers are not the sins of your children. And the God is able to clean and heal us from everything in our past. The people of Israel needed to hear this as a nation. And, and we need to hear it today. What your fathers have done does not need to limit God in what he can do today. No matter what has done in the past, God is able to deliver you. But he can transform you into vessels, deliverance for others. Wow. You hear that, guys? What was done in the past, that our background is not our destiny. The background of Moses' parents, Amram and Jochebed. But we see the significance of their names. We see the significance of what's going on in this portion of Scripture. And we sometimes we just skim over and we're like going into, God, give me the meat and potatoes. <laughs> God said, I'm giving you the meat. I'm giving you the potatoes. I'm, I'm showing you something that's so incredible. I'm showing that something out of their seed, out of the seed comes Moses. Moses was used mightily before the, before the Lord. But we got to look at what's going on in the background. We got to look at what's going on and behind, behind the scenes, what has happened, what's going on. And the Lord is saying to us today, the Lord is saying to us today, May we be exalted people and may we give glory to Yahweh. No matter how it looks, no matter what's going on. That, and then <laughs> I was looking at Aram too because it means exalted people, but it also means a friend of God. It means friends of God. And Moses, later on as we read, we continue to read, it says Moses was a friend of God. Moses was a friend of the Lord. And what, what has happened to us, because in this portion we see, we see that the, his mother and the father were significant and his sister was so significant because it was his sister that, that kept watch on him. It was his sister that went to Pharaoh's daughter and said, I'll go get you a Hebrew I'll go get you a Hebrew. And look at she went straight to Moses' mother, Jochebed. And Jochebed, if we read this portion, Jochebed was the one that was nursing her own son. Even though she 
even though she had to put him in the Nile because she couldn't, she could no longer hide him. And Pharaoh gave out the order to kill the to kill the babies. And so Jochebed had no. She was like, I can't hide him anymore. So she had to. She put him in the Nile, but it was his sister that kept an eye on him. And <clears throat> there's something about sisters, I tell you. And I want to give honor to my sister, my sister Vanessa. It's so amazing to have to to be honored with such a woman, just to be honored with, with my sister Vanessa, the way that she cares for us. She, because <clears throat> we're right now we're going through uh through the quarantine. Uh, Nathan had tested positive last week for, for COVID. And then so uh but she she's been my sister has been such an incredible, incredible um there's no words to describe. She, she, it reminded me of this as I was reading this. I said, wow. I said Moses' sister was taking care of was taking care of Moses even from the from the very beginning. And then look at what, what my sister like she she was like she's been such incredible. She is incredible. Vanessa, you are incredible. I know you watch on the on the replay, but I want to give honor to you. You know, the way that you've been taking care of, of uh of dad and mom and as we go as we're going through this my my, my sister's also a, a nurse so she has that she has a heart of compassion she has a heart that looking after the people and um it's it's amazing to see it and then she's come over here to to, to give us uh, the test and she said how are you guys doing Do you guys need anything you guys how's everything and, and she goes i'll tell you this she goes above and beyond and look at she's helped so many people um you know, getting tested. She's helped a lot of people. She, she, I was like, Vanessa, you should be become the uh, <laughs> the the quarantine or not the quarantine the uh, the testing center. You should have your own testing center. But uh, it's incredible, and I want to give honor to my sister, who is day after day, day after day, and and she has her her own family too. But day after day, she's looking out, and she's she goes above and beyond. She's another superwoman, like. Uh, and the women in my life, my wife, my mom, my grandparents, my my <clears throat> my in-laws, my sister, my aunts, and the the people of the of the church, and the women of the church are. Uh, I tell you this, amazing. Uh, yeah, my my grandmas, my grandma Lola, my mommy Rossi, <laughs> and uh, but, but I wanted to give honor to my sister because it's like in this portion we see that that. And Moses' sister was watching over him, and she she had she had the courage. Hear this, guys! She had the courage to go to Pharaoh's daughter and to say, "I can find you, I can find you the, I can find you a Hebrew that can help you nurse him." And she went straight to Moses' mom, Jochebed, and says, "Look, you can nurse your son." And what great bond did that bring to? To Jochebed and to Moses. So powerful. What the enemy meant for bad. What was meant for bad. God turned it around and used it for his glory. May we be exalted in that. May he. May we. Oh my goodness. It's already six o'clock. So fast. <laughs> may he be exalted through what has happened in our past. That's what I meant to say. I was just looking at the time. It was like six o'clock. And we, that was just. That was just portion of scripture. <laughs> But, uh, amen. Well, guys, got to read Matthew, read Matthew, read, uh, read the Psalms. It's, it's so powerful. But just see, see how the Lord is speaking to us, guys. See, it's like, wait, I didn't see that before. It's like, I didn't see that before. I just skipped, I skipped right over it before. It's like, I skipped right over it. But it's, it's just so many, like, in, the, in this season that we're in, God is saying, go deeper. Go deeper. Look at the meanings of the names. Look at the significance. Look at who were the parents, and look at like what's going on. And wow, yes, Vanessa's amazing. She's been a good nurse. I thank her for always helping us. When John had questions, she was there to to answer her. And Mike have been such incredible. Uh, we love you. Yes, yes. Give honor to my sister Vanessa. Give a shout out to my sister. Say Vanessa, you are incredible. Vanessa, Vanessa, we love you. And I uh, just give a shout out to her. I know that uh, that will speak volumes to her. And I, I pray that this will speak volumes to her as I, as 
So I'm sharing this to give honor to my sister, Vanessa. I love you. Appreciate you so much. Um, there's so much to take out of the scriptures, so much to, to draw from, to, even to the, the name Moses, to draw out of the water. May we draw from the water, guys. May we draw from the living waters. And it's so... <laughs> yeah, amen. It's a good message. I have one year companion. That's right. And it helps answer some questions I have. Prayers and blessings to all. Amen, Jade. I'm, I'm glad that the Lord is, is speaking to all of us. And this is a, a powerful message. And so love and appreciate you guys. Thank you guys for tuning in. I try to keep it within 30 minutes. So let's pray. Amen. Vanessa, you are incredible. Such a beautiful woman of God. Amen. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Powerful, guys. <laughs> With the Lord draw out of the water. <laughs> Incredible. Thank you guys for tuning in. May the Lord bless your body, your labor, your emotions, spiritual and social. Thank you guys for, for being on this journey with all of us, being on the journey, on this journey with me as we journey through the one-year Bible. Good to have you guys on, on the live. Have, hi, Michelle. God bless you. Christy, God bless you. <laughs> Smokey, God bless you. And uh, pray that you watch on the replay. Those who are on the replay, hi. Fuego on the replay. <laughs> and whoever else watches on the replay, God bless you guys. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Hey, Salma. <laughs> Uh, good to have you. Blessings to every single one of you. Uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. See you on Bye.